Our team is on every angle of this story and what may come from it. Dieter Bosa, Steve Kovac, Christina Parts and Evelis. Dieter, let's start with you. What do we know about uh, Altman's ambitions and the price tag he has put on them, or someone has? Tyler, we know that they are mind-boggling. This is like the moonshot of all moonshots, and I'm going to use Google's definition here. A moonshot is something that sounds undoable, but if done, could redefine humanity. That is what Sam Altman is reportedly looking at. Let's start with the number. According to the journal, it could require up to $7 trillion. That is seven times the expected size of chip sales in 2030. It's more than the combined market caps of Apple and Microsoft. It's seven million millions written out, 12 zeros, if you're counting. We'll put it up on the screen for you. Yes, we could barely fit it on one screen. Now, the project itself is aimed at reshaping the world's chip building capacity. Altman is going after one of the most complex, expensive, and geopolitically sensitive industries in the world. And it's a project that would create an equally complex partnership between OpenAI, chip makers, investors, power providers, and governments. Perhaps the most interesting part of this is the why. OpenAI and Altman are on a quest to develop AGI, or artificial general intelligence, which OpenAI defines as systems that are broadly smarter than humans and so has the ability to teach itself, thereby creating new, even potentially smarter AGIs. Depending on who you talk to, that could ruin humanity or could supercharge it. A lot would need to fall into place for any of this to happen. There are still a ton of questions that I know we're going to get into. A few of them, though. If chips are a national security issue, do we let Abu Dhabi fund a new landscape because you're going to need sovereign wealth money for this. Can a software CEO lead the charge when others, notably mega caps, chip companies themselves, struggling to catch up to NVIDIA? And how do you raise seven trillion dollars? Guys, I was trying to figure out what do you think the valuation would be of a seven trillion dollar investment? You, you got me, but we'll come back to you in just a bit. Why don't you po ponder that for a minute, Deirdre? Joining us now on set to discuss this is CNBC's technology correspondent Steve Kovac. I, I'm guessing if this is as big as uh, these numbers suggest that this has to have a major governmental uh, drive behind it, yeah, some way, one way or another. Exactly. And Deirdre alluded to that, too, the possible security issues. Let me just read. Uh, I asked OpenAI about this, and uh, a spokesperson told me, um, I'll just quote here, uh, we will continue to keep the U.S. government informed, given the importance to national priorities, and look forward to sharing more details at a later date. So, they are taking that into consideration. They are talking to authorities. At least that's what they s say they're doing. But we know what the U.S.'s uh, position here is. We've had those chip sanctions going from uh, over to China. That's been kind of hurting NVIDIA a little bit and other chip companies uh, unable to do business maybe in China in the same way they were because this technology is seen as so fundamental to the future. It really is And so a national race. security and important. national security and it, you name it all down the line. So... All that gets tied up in there. We're talking about the $7 trillion whiz-bang, oh, my God, number. Here Where did too. that number come from? Was that a number he put on it, the investment? That's, it, I guess. It, that's what the journal is reporting. That's what, they, that's what apparently he thinks it will take to do what he wants to do here. But who has seven? trillion? This is a question I would have for Deirdre here is, who has the $7 trillion besides governments? It's not, you know, VCs Sovereign can't do that. Funds. Yeah, sovereign yeah. wealth funds. Sovereign I mean, wealth funds would have them. And there aren't too many sovereign wealth funds that, you know, the U.S. government would be cool with us. Or a with. consortium of so exactly. sovereign wealth funds. I but mean. And I think for that, you'd have to go to the Middle East. Yeah, but, ar but, arguably, which they're doing. Singapore. but arguably the UAE would be one of those that would potentially uh, make sense sure. and check a lot of boxes. And to be very, very clear, and I can say this from many of my conversations on the national security side and my interviews on the record with Gina Raimondo, the Commerce Secretary, 100% without a doubt, semiconductors are a national security issue. They're only becoming more of a national security issue. It also speaks to a broader industrial policy here in the U.S. Uh, that is much more national security focused. But the other piece of this, of course, is going to be the electricity and the energy needs that are associated with all of these semiconductors and all of this AI compute power, too. And I'd imagine that would be part of the conversation you're having with, say, sovereign wealth funds or like a UAE that is energy rich. Exactly. And that comes down to oil, <laughs> doesn't it? And, and fossil fuels. And, you know, that, that's not what the Silicon Valley ethos really would want from this at the same time. So I, this is ambitious. Like, ambitious is not even the right word for it. It is almost <laughs> ludicrous. Uh, Mind-boggling. That's mind -boggling. what I keep going yeah. back to. I can't think of a better word. Yeah. And, I mean, Deirdre covers uh, VC funding quite a bit. I mean, Deirdre, when was the last time you heard a deal 
a, a was, round of funding even approaching one trillion. I thought a lot about that this morning, and it has to be SoftBank's Vision Fund. That was a hundred billion dollar fund that was bigger than anything we ever saw before, and this is magnitudes, magnitudes larger, and that completely reshaped the venture capital world, the startup world, led to supercharged companies like WeWork. Can you imagine what this would do to some of the chip companies? Mm. Well, let's bring, let's move to the chip side specifically of the equation, and let's and how Altman's plan could affect the existing chip heavyweights, since we know some of the reporting suggests that they would be involved in this process. Christina Parts and has that side of the story from the Nasdaq. Christina, what is your reporting <laughs> unearthing on on, on That's this? That's a good point. Uh, I haven't got them. Dynamic. I need to do I, I, if I, It's funny because you use the word could, and I'm going to stick with that because, like everyone's alluded to, it is quite a mind-boggling number. But if I'll use the word if the funding does come through. This could bode well for equipment makers like LAM Research, KLA, Applied Materials, which already could also get an additional boost because of CHIPS Act funding. Morgan, that you just talked about, we're expecting more awards to be dispersed in the coming uh, two months or so. So that's a positive for a lot of these names you're seeing on your screen. There's also strength possibly in the chip designer simulation and verification firms like Cadence Design, Synopsis, and so, so you, that's the reason why you're seeing Cadence and Synopsis up higher today because of those two leaders. Even ARM, which we saw an urge, a surge, sorry, I should say, just after its earnings report, uh, this stock is up. Again, two and a half percent. But look up, is week to date, 65 percent. They make the blueprint for a lot of these chips. So if all this funding is coming into the United States to build, these are some of the beneficiaries. There is also a Reuters report that OpenAI and NVIDIA are working on custom chips, hence the positive reaction in NVIDIA shares. Creating custom chips isn't new for NVIDIA, though. I want to point that out. And something CEO Jensen Wong did mention in his keynote back in 2002, which I listened to, but it was largely overlooked, myself included, because we were all just more focused on NVIDIA's AI chips, right? It's all about those GPUs. But today, Reuters reporting NVIDIA is actually meeting with Amazon, Meta, Google, and OpenAI to discuss building their own custom chips. And they're also in talks, NVIDIA's in talks to, to work with a, on a wireless chip with Ericsson. So I reached out to NVIDIA. They wouldn't confirm any of these conversations. But it's still enough to create a reaction in all of these stocks, a lot of these companies like Ericsson, or a negatively impact a company like Marvell, because Marvell does make custom chips. So does Broadcom. And for those that are like, ah, oh, all this conversation about chip stuff, custom chips, think of it like performing very specific tasks. Therefore, they're a lot cheaper than GPUs, which GPUs can handle a wide range of tasks like graphics, rendering, machine learning, et cetera. And to bring it full circle to your conversation requires a lot more power. In the chip world, they use the word or power gate, right? And this is going to be a huge topic in the years to come because of the power use that is needed for these data centers, which is why efficiency is key for budgets for everyone. One more company we're not mentioning, Microsoft. Its destiny is uniquely tied to what OpenAI is doing. A lot of the technology they are developing or OpenAI is developing will eventually find its way to uh, Microsoft products. They're already doing that with their co-pilot assistant and so forth. Um, the journal reporting that you know, Satya Nadella, the C CEO of Microsoft, is aware that Sam Altman is going out here trying to do that. But look, what we learned last fall was this is a complicated relationship, not just because uh, Microsoft relies so much on the technology, but because it's heavily invested in OpenAI, too. Mm -hmm. So if OpenAI is chasing, you know, a $7 trillion fundraise at, again, as Deirdre said, who knows what the valuation of a company would be there, uh, you know, that, that plays into Microsoft. And that, you, that plays Microsoft into Microsoft's valuation. Microsoft has a lot valuation. of money, but they don't have $7 trillion. A exactly. And so that also plays into how Microsoft values its stake in OpenAI, not to mention just the technology being developed. Microsoft also working on its own chips. So uh, there are just a lot of complicating What's factors. What's the argument, Deirdre, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, Christina or Steve or Deirdre for that matter, that, that a non-incumbent chip maker, not uh, NVIDIA, not Intel, not Broadcom, not ARM, uh, uh, not AMD, could be a big beneficiary of this? Well, in the case with OpenAI, he has the branding right now and the interest from, you know, sovereign wealth funds all around the world that want to invest in AI. So there is an opportunity for investments there. But the big question is, uh, I, I think the skepticism is around actually OpenAI building the chips. Why he has to rely on third party members. A beneficiary would be TSMC, Taiwan Semi, for example. But we saw with the example of Apple. Apple has been working on these uh, mobile chips 
for smartphones for quite some time. But they have to re-sign their agreement with Qualcomm because they weren't able to make a chip that was ready to put in the new iPhones. And that shows that even Apple, a tech company that's been around forever, mega cap, you know, has been a, a, a leader in technology, still can't figure out exactly how to get those chips for a, the perfect chip for the phone. And it shows that a lot of these chip companies will benefit because they specialize. And that's what an AMD does. That's what Marvell does, Broadcom, Arista Networks. The list continues. All right, Christina, thanks very much. Deirdre, you too. And Steve, thanks for being with thanks. us, explaining this all to us.